Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be doing a guide for Oda into Japan for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it really means a lot. Let's get started. So Oda is the first choice for many players when looking to unite Japan and form Japan later on with their excellent militarily focused ideas and they were one of the three shogunates which historically did unite Japan. Almost all Japanese daimyos are pretty much equal but Oda gets an edge over almost all of them due to their excellent starting military traditions like plus 10% morale of armies and plus 10 percent infantry combat ability. The first thing we're gonna do is summon the diet and pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna seize land, we're gonna give the clergy religious state clerical advisory council, we're gonna give the bushi monthly military power and increased levies, and we're gonna give the merchant guilds land of commerce patronage of the arts. And then we're gonna sell our crown land. Now we're left with 0% crown land and we can get the event later which brings it back. That's why I didn't get 3 agendas for the Bushi because they will get the 4th one later and they might have too much influence. So that's why we're giving them only these 2 and not the one for minus 25% advisor discount. Then we're gonna set our rivals. It's almost always these guys. We're gonna rival Tokugawa, Kitabatake and Imagawa. Not Uesugi, they're kind of big right now. Then we're gonna hire a military advisor. If you have a morale or a discipline guy go for it. I don't have one right now. So I'm gonna take this force limit guy and I'm gonna focus on mill. After that, I'm gonna give my ruler military command and put him in charge of the army, hire one more infantry regiment and hire the free company. I'm gonna set my second merchant to collect from Beijing. With one of my diplomats, I'm gonna royal marry Ashikaga. And with the other one, we're gonna ally some bigger nations not too close to us. Yamana will almost always be available, if not always, so we are gonna ally Yamana. We're gonna let a day go by so the diplomat comes back and we're gonna ally someone up here too. Usually it's Ando. If it's not Ando, you can ally Nambu, but they will almost always be available. Now that we have two allies and we have royal married Ashikaga and we're gonna improve relations literally all the time with one of our diplomats with Ashikaga. Now once December 11th rolls around it's time for the battle royale to start. As you can see now it's December 13th. I've put one of my diplomats to improve relations with Ashikaga and this guy will always be doing this. Now we wait for our infantry stack recruit and for the free company to recruit as well. And now that our free company is recruited it's time to start the never ending wars. Basically since we're daimyo we have the Sengoku CB against every nation that we border via a land connection so that means we have that CB against Kitabatake, Toki and Tokugawa. Now we're not gonna be declaring on Toki obviously because they have a level 3 fort so you need to keep that in mind. Tatekayama also has a level 3 fort in this province and Amago has a level 3 fort in this province too. All other daimyos have level 1 forts except Ouchi who has a level 2 fort here so keep that in mind. Basically that leaves us either with Kitabatake or Tokugawa to declare on. And it's gonna be the weakest one of course. Tokugawa has two allies Hosokawa and Shiba and both of them are pretty big and Kitabatake Take has only one ally, Otomo, and they have only one province. So we're gonna be declaring on Kitabatake in my case. In your case, Tokugawa might be weaker, but one of these two who you think is easier to beat. And of course, we're gonna use the Sengoku CB. Don't click the humiliate rival one by mistake. And just let your stack siege down the fort while the other one is standing by in case they need to engage. And after we take care of them, we'll go take care of their ally over here if we can cross this strait. You should also build one or two galleys during this time. It doesn't matter if you go over your force limit. You can also recruit an admiral and add it to your navy so you can send them out here to blockade. Just be careful that you don't engage more ships than you have, otherwise you will lose. And as you can see, I've already 100%ed them only a few months later because this guy right here got wiped out and I sieged them down over here. This will happen very often. This other nation I was fighting who was their ally literally was in five wars at one time and they got full annexed. So of course we are gonna full annex them and take all their money. Since they were our rival, I am gonna select another rival, someone like Shiba maybe. Of course we're gonna core this. And since we took this province, we now expanded our CB towards Hatakayama and Tsutsui as well. So once again, as soon as we peaced out, we're gonna be looking for another nation to fight. No waiting around, no relaxing, nothing like that. So we could be fighting Tokugawa and Shiba, or we could be fighting Tsutsui and Ouchi. Since Ouchi does have a level 2 fort, I am actually gonna fight Tokugawa and Shiba. And I am gonna declare this war immediately. And I'm also gonna recruit another general and add them to the free company. 
During this time, we're also going to be sending our second diplomat to improve relations with outrage countries, and we're only going to bring him back to declare and end wars. So one guy improving with Ashikaga, other guy improving with outraged countries. Now, since Shiba is my rival, I am going to humiliate them and take all their money. Never take land from your enemy's allies unless you co-belligerate them. The aggressive expansion isn't worth it, and we're going to be fighting them in about five years probably too. And of course, we're gonna full annex Tokugawa. In your case, of course, you might be fighting Tsutsui or Imagawa, depending how the alliance networks are. Now it's once again time to look for the weakest link, and in my case, that's Imagawa, since only one of their allies will join Ishiki, who is a pretty weak nation over here. And once again, we're gonna be declaring a Sengoku War. Once we defeat our next enemy, of course, full annex, take all their money. And you can start concentrating development once you conquer a full area. In my case, I'm not going to concentrate yet because I still need these two provinces. Don't forget to set new rivals every time a rival slot opens up and set the ones which you will be fighting the soonest. And don't forget to keep paying off your loans. Now it's once again time to look for the next weakest nation. In my case, it's either Takeda or Ogasawara and I am going to be declaring on Takeda. By this time you should also be getting military tech 4 and even though we are overpaying by way too much we are immediately gonna take it so we can get an even bigger edge over all the daimyos that we're gonna be fighting and of course we are gonna be one of the first nations to take military tech 4 in my case i am actually the first nation to take military tech 4 that i can see and you should actually be in the same situation and once again full annex and take all their ducats Make sure you do reduce war exhaustion from time to time, at least by one or two clicks in order to make the cores cheaper. We don't care about admin and diplotech right now, we only care about miltech and admin and diplo points will be used to reduce war exhaustion and to core. So in the first 4 or 5 years, it's almost 5 years in my case, you should have grown by 4 or 5 provinces. Basically, you're gonna be growing by 1 or 2 provinces a year. Pretty quickly, to be honest. Aggressive expansion is still not that bad and it's still manageable. And don't worry, even if coalitions form against you and it says there are 10 nations in the coalition, you will probably only be fighting 1 or 2. Since you have truces with the other nations and since they are in their own wars against other nations in the coalition. So coalitions are totally not a big deal. The only big deal is if Ashikaga asks us to commit a Sudoku. So that's why we always want to keep improving relations with them. And with all that money we got, we are going to pay off some loans and once again look for the weakest nation to attack. And in my case, it seems to be Tsutsui. And this time I am actually going to call in my ally of Yamana since Ouchi does have two forts and they're going to be kind of annoying to fight. So why not? I will promise them land of course and I will give them a province of Ouchi if I can. Now Ashikaga did just force me to commit Sudoku and of course I have lost a bunch of stab but it is what it is. They still have a pretty high opinion of us so I don't know how exactly that happened but it's not a big deal. We're still gonna royal marry them and keep improving relations with them and just step up. This does happen but they still won't declare a war against us. So if this happens to you it's not too much of a big deal. It is kind of annoying but whatever. Since we do have some crown land back now and the event didn't actually trigger, we are gonna take aristocratic counselors. Once again, full annex and take all their money. A coalition might form, but we don't care. Since this is you snooze, you lose, and you snooze, you lose money, we're gonna be declaring immediately once more. In my case, the weakest nation right here is Ogasawara, so that's the nation I'm gonna be declaring on. I can't really expand south because I'm still allied to Yamana, and Ashikaga is of course the emperor, and we don't have a CB against Kono. We're gonna be moving north once again. In your case, you might be able to go this way too. Just pick the weakest nation. We aren't really focusing on the mission tree, but if you do complete a mission, of course we should take it. All of these initial missions give you some pretty nice stuff. And once again, full annex. Now in my case, I am a little locked in expansion since I do have a truce with Yamana, I can't declare on them. Ashikaga is the Shogun. Toki does have a level 3 fort and I could declare on them, but they are in a war with Shiba right now and by me declaring, I would only help out Shiba to siege this fort. Ashikaga is here once again, Uesugi, I have a truce with Date and Uesugi is allied to Amago who has a level 3 fort and would be annoying to fight. Now realistically, the only nation I could declare on is Uesugi, even though it would be very annoying 
continuing to fight Amago. So I am gonna declare on them, but not immediately. First, I am gonna hire about two more infantry regiments, even though I am pretty significantly over forest limit. Now that I do have 10k troops, it's time to declare on Uesugi, who is allied to Amago, who has a level 3 fort. And since I do have 10k troops, I will be able to siege down a level 3 fort, which means we can also move on to fighting someone like Toki or Amago. If you do start to get rebel problems, just increase the stability in that province. It's not worth fighting rebels right now since we are fighting so many countries. So it's been almost 10 years and I have taken over 8 provinces, which means I have 9 now. In your case, you will probably have 7 to 12 depending on how fast or slow you are going. But anyway, thankfully we still have 200 relations with Ashikaga, so everything is good with them. Aggressive expansion isn't too bad and we still have one ally, Ando, which is enough. I am actually gonna ally Ito as well since we are pretty far off from expanding in this direction. And it's time to declare on the weakest nation once again, in my case it's Ogasawara since they don't have any allies. I did of course just defeat Ogasawara right here and as you can see I have truces with plenty of nations. Your situation should also look similar to this and I am going to be declaring on Satake since one of their allies Shiba won't join and I'm also going to co-belligerent Chiba who is right here and they don't have any other allies. So it's a great opportunity to take out two nations at once. If you are fighting two nations like this and planning to annex them both, don't forget to separate piece them so you can get some more ducats. Once again, I am truce locked. As you can see, these orange nations I can't fight because I have a truce with them. And the only nation I can realistically fight is Utsunomiya. They are allied to Ando, annoyingly, who is my ally. I guess it is time to break the alliance. And I am gonna full annex Utsunomiya. Don't forget to keep paying off loans. And I just declared on Shiba since my truce with them finally ran out and truces are starting to run out everywhere. I didn't declare on Yamana because I still have a royal marriage to them because I was allied. And Shiba didn't have any allies so realistically they were the best choice to declare on. Now it's been almost 14 years and at this point you should have 12 to 16 provinces. I have 14 right now and you should be keeping your relations with Ashigaga maxed and you should be at you should keep taking Miltech ahead of time. Don't worry about admin and diplo we'll worry about that later and don't worry about the renaissance either just keep expanding so i just 100 percented shiba and of course i am gonna full annex them even though they have four provinces it doesn't matter how big a nation is we are always going to be full annexing them and we're gonna use their money to pay off loans we are going to be in loans all the time. If you're ever close to reaching the max amount of loans, you can always exploit development. I don't need to do it right now, but I am going to do it to show you guys. So you can do it from here or you can do it from here. And now that I full siege them and pieced out their ally, I am of course going to full annex Yamana. Now we have grown quite significantly by now and we do already have a coalition formed against us with about six nations. This is also around the time where coalitions will start to form against you too by about plus or minus five years. But here is something interesting that you need to know. So Ishiki is in a coalition against us. So that means if we fought them, we would fight all six of these nations and their allies as well. But if I go to declare war on Ishiki, we will be fighting only these two nations, Ochi and Ito. Why is this? Well, it's because all these nations that are in a coalition against me might have truces or they might be in different wars against other members of the coalition so even if a coalition forms it's not a big deal as we can see Date right here is also in a coalition against me and I will only be fighting them and Ouchi if I declare on them and not all six members of the coalition so coalitions aren't a problem at all now our relations with Ashikaga are down to 100 and there is not much that we can do to improve them so this is around the time where Ashikaga might declare the disloyal subject war or whatever it's called against you. If they do declare that war, you will basically be fighting Ashikaga and all the other daimyos. And as we can see, there are still about nine daimyos left. Along with Ashikaga, that's 10 nations. But there is no time to relax and we have to immediately be declaring on other nations as well. By this point, your options will be pretty limited. As you can see, I have truces with two nations. The other nation is Ashikaga and I can only declare on Kono, Ishiki or Date. I am probably going to be declaring 
clearing on Date since they appear to be the weakest. And now I am gonna be the clearing on Date. Like I said, they are in a coalition against me, but we can clearly see that only Ouchi will join that war. Ouchi is right here. They do have two forts that I'm gonna have to siege down, but it won't be a problem. Now even though I'm 12% behind on tech because of the renaissance and I'm 40% ahead of tech in mil tech, I am still gonna take mil tech 6. In case Ashikaga does declare a war on us, this will help us get an edge over them. Now if you do get an event to go open or isolationist, I recommend always going for the isolationist choice because of that achievement which requires you to go full isolationist, but if you already have that achievement or don't care about achievements, you can pick whichever one you want. Since I already have that achievement, I am going to take this outcome which will give me minus 10% advisor costs. And of course I am going to full annex Date. Now it's time to train some more troops, repair our ships and get ready to declare another war. Now my ally Ito just called me into a war against these two nations and I did accept. It's fine to accept your ally's call to arms and it will give us a little bit time to rest from our own wars and let aggressive expansion die down while also helping out our ally, even though we are going to be breaking the alliance with them pretty soon. Now once you get to a point like this where you will have conquered most of Japan, your expansion opportunities will actually be pretty limited because of truces. Now as we can see, the only nations I can attack are Ashikaga and Amago. I have truces with Ochi and Kono and Ando and Ito is my ally. I am gonna be breaking the alliance with Ito after my next war though. So obviously the only choice for me is to attack Amago since it's too early to attack Ashikaga. Shoni and So will join the war. So is right here. Shoni is right here. And let's see if they have any other allies. And there's no other allies. So I will be fighting only these three nations and I will co-belligerent all of them in order to expand as fast as I can. And that's what I am going to do. Of course Amago does have a level 3 for it, which will be a bit annoying, but it's whatever. Now I am going to full annex Shoni since I did co-belligerent them. I just white beast so because I didn't have enough transports to get over there and of course I am going to full annex Amago. If you do have any allies now is the time to dissolve that alliance. As we can see there's only about 6 so Ashikaga even if they declared on us right now I do only have 20 relations with them we would easily be able to beat them. It's not the time to declare on Ashikaga yet. We do want to clean up as many vassals as we can be before we go to war with them because we don't want to have any vassals left to integrate later. I do have truces with everyone right now though so I'm gonna have to wait 2 more years until my first truce runs out which is with Ando and at that point I'm gonna be fighting whoever it doesn't matter and full annexing everyone even if they aren't co-belligerent and that is the same thing you should be doing once Ashikaga is only down to about four to seven daimyos. Now at this point while you're this strong you can even start deving the renaissance and I recommend deving it in the province of Setsu because it is a farmland and it is a center of trade and it is right next to your future capital of Kyoto so of course you should enact the encouraged development edict and dev it up in military power and in diplomatic power as much as you can because we still need the admin power in order to core and you will get the renaissance in no time now once you do get enough splendor for your first age ability you can actually take whatever you want if you take japan's ideas and traditions once you form japan and plan to go colonial you should take the higher developed colonies if not if you just want to go to war as japan with oda's ideas you should probably take justified wars or transfer subject i'm just gonna take justified wars and now I am going to be declaring on Ando like I said and I will even be full annexing their ally Kono even if they're not a co-belligerent and if they had more allies I would full annex them too. And like I said I will be full annexing both nations. Now there are only 4 nations left in the entirety of Japan. It's us, Azoda, Ashikaga, Ito, Ochi. I can't declare on anyone. I still have a truce with Ochi that runs out in about 5 months. They are allied to Ito and even though there are 7 provinces right here, I will be full annexing both of them when I fight them. I just need to wait for the truce to run out. You'll probably be doing the same right now as well, waiting for truces. Now my truce with Ochi has run out and I will be declaring. While I'm still fighting this war, my truce with So has run out. So I am also going to be declaring on them. They are literally the last daimyo I have left to fight before I declare on Kyoto. And around this time, plus or minus 10 years, depending on how fast or slow you are, you should be in pretty much the exact same situation. 
And now that I full annexed literally every daimyo, as you can see, Kyudo only has us, Oda, as a subject. I'm gonna be recruiting a few more regiments and getting ready to declare on Ashikaga and their ally Ainu. It's about 50 50 if Ashikaga will ally Ainu. It doesn't even matter. They are both very weak for us right now. So, time to recruit a few more regiments and get ready to declare. And once you have reorganized your armies and put them on the border of Kyoto and their allies, it's time to declare war. Now in your case, you might even declare on Kyoto even if they have like up to 5 daimyos and that's honestly fine. But the thing is you will have to integrate those daimyos later and I do recommend wiping every single one of them out before you declare on Ashikaga. But it's not a problem if they have a few more daimyos lying around. And of course we are gonna declare or war for the emperor with that CB. We are gonna lose 3 stability since they are our liege but we're gonna stab up when we do get admin points. And I am actually gonna co-belligerent Ainu since they don't have any other allies. <laughs> And I did just full annex I knew, and now I am going to full annex Ashikaga. And now the fall of Kyoto event will happen, and our government type has changed to a shogunate. We can take some missions at this point. And of course, the Japan is United decision is available to us, which we are going to take. And now we are Japan. Now, when the event New Traditions and Ambitions appears, you have two choices. To take Japan's mediocre ideas or remain with the OP Oda ideas. If you want to go for a colonial playthrough where you will basically be playing tall in the region of Japan, maybe conquering Korea and Manchuria and colonizing down here and the Americas, you should actually take Japanese ideas if you're colonized. If not, if you plan to go for a more military style playthrough where basically you will be conquering lots of land militarily you should stick with Oda's ideas I am personally gonna stick with Oda's ideas right now which means we're gonna take the no we can't abandon our roots choice we do get claims on Korea once we unite Japan and we can take even more missions like this one we can also choose a tier 1 government reform you can take whichever one of these you want I'm personally gonna go for the autocracy of course you can rival Korea at this point and you should do it. And you should also convert these provinces up here in Ainu to Shinto so you can complete the Pacify the North mission which will give us the Kuril Islands right here. After this point you basically have conquered the entire region of Japan with the exception of Ryukyu down here and the Kuril Islands but we will get to those later. And you will have done this in about 30 years like me. I did it in basically 30 years and a couple of months and depending on your playstyle you might be 5 to 10 years earlier than me or 5 to 10 years later it doesn't matter and you might even have a couple of daimyos which you will be integrating depending on how your game went of course with careful war declarations and truce juggling you should have prevented coalitions from declaring in my case a coalition never declared on me and ashikaga the shogunate never declared war on me either of course you don't have to form japan and you could stay as oda the entire game and basically make the entire world into daimyos since you would have the shogunate government reform if you don't form Japan. I formed it just to show you how it's done. You can stay Oda or you could form Japan and when you form Japan you can keep Oda's ideas or take Japanese ideas. Like I said Japanese ideas are for colonization and keep Oda's if you're going for a military style playthrough. Now once you have United Japan the next 10 years you're gonna be focusing on repaying your loans. As you can see I have quite a few loans. I have seven and I am running a pretty high deficit so I'm gonna be reducing my army size, setting light ships to protect trade. I'm gonna stop being over over my force limit if I am. You should also disable forts or even delete them and focus on making as much money as you can, repaying loans and start building marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, start building workshops in all the high value trade good provinces such as paper, dyes, silk, chinaware, tea, iron, copper. You will even get an event where one of these provinces, I don't remember which one, spawns gold so that will be even a bigger boost for you economically and basically you should focus 
on recovering your economy in the next 10 years. Japan's missions focus on conquest and colonization mostly, and you will take advantage of them depending on your playstyle of course, if you go colonial or not. If you do go colonial, I recommend discovering North America so you can spawn colonialism before the European powers and cripple them even more. And your next goal for conquest will of course be Korea. They are Ming's tributary though, so you will have to maneuver around that, or you can even start building spy networks on the Yurchin tribes right here and start conquering Manchuria. And you should of course focus on conquering Manchuria, Korea, all the Chinese regions and even going down here into the rich trade nodes. Now Nippon isn't a very good trade node and you will want to move your trade capital depending on how far you conquer either to Beijing if you're going for conquering this area or if you're going for an even bigger conquest you can move it all the way to Bengal to get all the trade from over here into Bengal. If you are going colonial you should take exploration and expansion ideas as your first idea groups after that it's up to you but if you're not going colonial and if you're not going colonial I recommend taking economic and quantity followed by trade and quality. Those mesh very well with Oda's ideas. There are also three monuments in Japan. The first one is the Himeji Castle in the province of Harima. In the province of Kai we have Mount Fuji and in the province of Musashi we have the Sankin Kotai Palaces. Now none of these monuments are that strong to be honest. They're kind of underwhelming compared to other ones but when you do upgrade them you should focus on the Sankin Kotai Palaces first then on the Himeji Castle second and finally on Mount Fuji in that order. Japan also has five achievements which is the most of any country. The first is cherry picking where you need to conscript a three-star general from a daimyo subject and you could of course do this if you had daimyos and you didn't conquer all of them like I did. Then you have Kirishita in Japan which requires you to start as a daimyo and convert yourself to Christianity and of course there is an event for that later on in the game. Then we have Made in Japan which requires you to embrace the manufacturer's institution as Japan by 1655. And this is very easily doable by building manufacturers in every province that you can as soon as you can. Then we have Sakoku Law, which requires you to go full isolationist in six incidents. And you can see the incidents right here. And you can see your isolationist level right here. You can check out my video on the Shinto religion if you want to know more about how it works. And finally, we have the Chrysanthemum Throne, which requires you to unite Japan as a daimyo. And basically, you already did this by now. And they're all very fun achievements, and I do recommend going for them. Let me know in the comments below. Below, what's the next nation that you would like to see a guide on? If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. And I've also launched channel memberships, so if you want to support the channel with more than subscribing, you can check out the join button down below and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.